Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is September 12th, and right now we are looking at the infrared satellite imagery. Here's the Pacific Northwest, our upper level low, finally creeping off to the east as we speak. And we've got our next frontal system. Almost looks like it has a bit of a punch to it, kind of has a fall look to it, but don't get too excited, especially if you're across BC or Washington. Better dynamics though for Portland as this frontal system does arrive. We're going to take a look at some of these details here in a moment and see what we can and expect across the area and we'll take a look at the extended forecast as always as we go through the video here this morning so taking a look at where we are you can still see mainly bc washington oregon west of the cascades still pretty socked in and there is some of that low cloud and fog activity across portions of eastern oregon as well and if i scroll through you can kind of see the spin in the atmosphere that is our upper level low continues to trudge off to the east and there's even some low clouds across some of the higher terrain there of idaho also now, if I scroll back through last night and through yesterday, if you woke up across Western Washington, I mean, we had some drizzle out there. This stuff was socked in. There was a lot of moisture associated with this really trap near the surface. And we scrolled through the day yesterday and some areas broke out a bit for a little bit of time here, but not everybody broke out. And then it kind of filled back in as we went through overnight. We emerged back out towards this morning and you can see the frontal system off to the left here out over the Pacific Ocean to our west. Now, thunderstorm activity yesterday, again, and the lion's share went to Oregon. Some of that did happen across portions of eastern Washington up towards Spokane as well. And even as far back as some of the east slopes of the Cascades of Oregon, but nothing for the Cascades of Washington yesterday. Looking at smoke, high resolution, rapid refresh, vertically integrated smoke. We still have some of the fires producing some of that smoke. So there still are people dealing with this surface smoke, like Chelan, maybe Wenatchee, Leavenworth out there. You go out towards northeast Washington, uh, Okanagan River Valley. Oroville out there uh, still dealing with some of that smoke here so hopefully we can start to get some of these troughs in here and start to extinguish these fires as we start to make our seasonal change but not too bad for places like Seattle Portland Willamette Valley and up into southwest BC uh, looking at thunderstorm activity today according to the Storm Prediction Center you can see it does include kind of Spokane can't rule one out still wrapping back around towards northeast Oregon as well Idaho and Montana and if you go further off to the east you start to get to that wind and hail threat also now this is the drought monitor i showed this yesterday but just going through things here we did have some slight changes we removed the extreme drought for some for some of southwest montana we put a little bit more back there right there across coming on western central montana there also we scroll through here and we put a little bit more extreme drought across places like spokane Took away some severe drought for portions of Oregon and some of Northwest Oregon there also, but still pretty drought stricken here across the region. Unless you are in Eastern and Southeastern Oregon, you are under some type of drought here or abnormally dry conditions across the Pacific Northwest. Now also looking out over the ocean, look at how abnormally warm the water is out there. And you may take a look at this and be like, oh, this is still pretty chilly water. It shouldn't be a big deal, but, but it is a big deal for marine life out there when you do get the success of and kind of warmth in the water it can do damage to the marine ecosystem out there so we scientists like to watch that closely and this can also have impacts on the meteorology here across pacific northwest when you get all this warmer water it can really increase overnight temperatures especially for the area and this can also add some energy to the atmosphere when you get some of these upper level lows with the chilly air aloft you can actually add some cape to the atmosphere this could potentially help for some maybe some water spout viewing off the coastal areas and if that is is in the Puget Sound as well. It can happen in the Puget Sound also. So there are some meteorological impacts. This can also, uh, this, these marine heat waves can also impact things like atmospheric rivers and just give them a slight bit more amount of juice to work with as they are moving into the area. So looking at 500 millibar heights, where are we now? Well, there's this upper level low kind of stretched out all the way back up towards Alberta, across Western Montana, Idaho, and down towards Nevada, Eastern Oregon, a little bit of a transient ridge kind of moving through here. And that's why we've got the state atmosphere over portions west of the Cascades kind of locking in that inversion and bringing us the drizzle in the mornings and some of that low cloud activity but then we got this frontal system rolling through but you notice the best dynamics are headed down in towards Oregon some of that does clip Washington I'll show you the precipitation amounts here in a moment another ridge tries to build we may warm up a little bit here as we go through the mid portion of September but another trough looks like it's fairly progressive and it should be moving through the area also as we go to the end of the following week we'll see what that has with it that's probably going to change several times over the next few days so we'll just kind of watch that trough there hopefully these troughs can remain progressive so we can get some precipitation and put out some of these fires now 
We're looking at the North American models. So this is over the next 60 hours. We're looking at the simulated infrared satellite imagery. So here we go with the next system approaching. And you can see the frontal system kind of moving in here. And as we go on in through Sunday morning, you could get some thunderstorm activity out of this that approaches some of the Oregon coast. And you can see some of these boomers fire up across some of the Oregon Cascades as we go through the morning on Sunday. So heads up for that. You can see some of that move across eastern Oregon as well. Again, the best dynamics probably across most of Oregon. Can we ring some precipitation out here across places like Washington and B.C.? Well, potentially potentially, but it's probably going to be more for places like Oregon. Now, if we look at the high resolution rapid refresh, I've zoomed out here today. This is lightning flash density potential. We'll scroll through here. There goes our next frontal system. Actually, let me back that up so we can look off to see what's happening in the east. A little bit of a thunderstorm chance as we go through the day today. Again, maybe southeast Washington. Uh, you can't rule out a lightning strike there, but mainly across the higher terrain of Idaho and on in through western Montana on the day today. So that system moves off to the east. There comes our next frontal system. You can see maybe it'll bring a thunderstorm down towards Brookings, Oregon, southwest Oregon as we go through very early Sunday morning. And then we go through Sunday morning, you see some of that development there across the Oregon Cascades thunderstorm potential as well. Now, if we look at six hour precipitation, again, there's that frontal system we saw on the infrared satellite imagery, push this into the future. And there goes that thunderstorm activity. Some of that could move up into the Washington Cascades as well as we go through Sunday morning. It does bring some rain to the coastal areas, but it's really losing its punch and it doesn't show much for Seattle. A little bit better there for Portland in terms of precipitation amounts. And again, the lion's share goes to portions of eastern Oregon. They need to share some of this bounty here with eastern Washington, which is much more drought stricken. And so is British Columbia as well. So maybe that'll come here in the ensuing weeks. But then we scroll off into the future and there's another frontal system out there a little bit too far out to get too caught up in those details. However, now lightning flash density potential on the European. Let's take a look to see what it says. So it does have some lightning potential here also as we go through this morning on Sunday, maybe up into Washington a little bit here. But again, the best dynamics, Oregon coast, places like Oregon, eastern slopes, the Cascades, Bend, Oregon, eastern Oregon as we go on in through the Monday morning time period there as well. Now, taking a look here, I did it for Portland, Oregon here. So I'm kind of doing a little fantasy windstorm search and not seeing much out there through the next 15 days. Some of the ensemble members do have a blustery day as we go on in through September 14th, which would be what, Sunday. Uh, but really, the, the mean is at 21 miles per hour. So it may be a little blustery at times for some portions. Maybe the Oregon coast getting a little bit more out of that also as we go on in through uh, this weekend here and deal with some of this thunderstorm activity. But if we look at total precipitation in inches, I'll kind of scroll through this quickly because we've been kind of going through this in some pretty extreme detail. And again, better amounts for some of the higher terrain there of Oregon. We have some of the coastal areas, but not much for Seattle. A little bit better for Portland, not much for Southwest BC, Bellingham, Northwest Washington, not getting much. Eastern Washington, not a lot as well. So let's hope some of this precipitation rides up and gets over some of the east slopes where we're a tinder box out there still even though we've gotten some recent rain we still need more to extinguish some of these fires now daily two meter maximum temperatures once the sun does start to emerge and some of the stuff burns off you can get back into the 70s here and things are pretty comfortable relatively speaking across the region we go through saturday a little bit of a warm-up there for seattle portland sunday we start to cool things down a little bit more as this frontal system moves through you see the entire region really not getting out of the 70s for the most part seattle upper 60s southwest bc something similar similar cooling off a little bit across the higher terrain also we go through monday tuesday look at that we bounce back another ridge tries to move in over the area how long will that last maybe another 80 degree day for seattle some mid 80s there maybe medford oregon look at that into the low 90s so some warm temperatures not out of the question for this time of year then it cools us down a little bit here as we go through wednesday thursday we'll see how that unfolds over the next couple of days and just checking the extended forecast as well you can kind of see how it continues to want to show some warm periods as we go through the end of september on and through early october and that's not even warm that's almost downright hot especially for this time of year good thing the overnight temperatures are dropping off because you know the sun is not you know, it sets much earlier than it did a few months ago, and we've got time to cool down in the overnight hours at least. But some of these daytime highs are pretty darn right warm, so we do have that potential. But then you can see the gradual cool down and cutoff starts to occur as we go on into October, as we go through our seasonal change there and start to emerge back in towards fall. Now, 46-day precipitation anomaly still kind of showing things on the dry side of the spectrum here across much of the Pacific Northwest. 
Uh, yeah, so you take that with a grain of salt, but I, I wish the signal showed the opposite, honestly. Six to 10 day temperature outlook above normal across the West Coast. Below normal signal starting to emerge here more and more as we go through the mid portion of September and eight to 14 days, something similar and kind of a mixed bag here again on the eight to 14 day as well. So I put out a hack video yesterday of what happened. So go ahead and watch that if you want. I didn't do much preparation into it. I just wanted to kind of document it. I didn't want to relive it too much. I, I tried to do some more preparation, but I just was not that into it. I just wanted to kind of get the main points out there and kind of let people know anybody else going through something like this maybe somebody will find this on the internet and kind of stumble upon what i did eventually after about 30 days of dealing with the artificial intelligence and kind of the mishmash of humans and canned responses and the email chain back and forth between youtube so hopefully maybe that'll help somebody out there uh, I know I was searching YouTube like crazy when I was going through the hack and I found a lot of other people were going through the hack itself and not a lot of people had very good answers. So maybe you can learn something from that or hopefully somebody can out there. Uh, but otherwise, hope you guys are having a good day. Click like and subscribe. We'll do this all again tomorrow and I will talk to you guys then.